بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد إن شاء الله we'll be commencing with the 29th juz as well after going through the 20th juz we'll be going through the 30th juz and as we know uh, the 29th and the 30th juz contains and comprises of many surahs many surah so uh, let us select a few surahs today inshallah and we will go over those surahs and then follow that followed by the completion of the surahs inshallah we'll make a dua and this will be the last tafsir session for the month of ramadan let us begin surah al-mulk a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tabarak al-ladhi biyadihi mulk wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Blessed is the being in, in whose hand lies the kingdomship. Blessed is the being in whose hand lies the sovereignty and the power. Wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. And he has full dominant power and control over each and every single thing. In Surah Al-Mulk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about his greatness. He discusses his greatness and the various creations that he has created. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just to highlight one ayah, Allah subhanahu wa says, the alladhi khalaqa sab'a samawatin tibaqa, the one who created the, the seven skies tibaqa in layers. As we know, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created seven skies. They're also known as the seven heavens. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it such that each sky is very vast. Each sky is a best amazingly huge it's extremely huge and the sky that we see right now this is just known as the sky of the world this is not even the first sky meaning human beings as of yet they haven't even reached the first sky they're still in the sky of the world so when we look above us and including that is including space and all the galaxies and all of that that is all that all falls under uh, the sky of the world and the Prophet وسلم, during the night journey, he actually went and he went through all of the skies. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, sent Jibreel. And Jibreel, he had the buraq, a very special type of animal. The Prophet وسلم, said it was between a mule and a donkey. He sat on that animal. And then he went from the first sky to the second, to the third, and so on and so forth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He's the one who created the seven skies, layer upon layer. Hal tarab in futur. Do you see any type of gap? Do you see any type of hole? Do you see any type of deficiency within those layers? And then the surah continues and talks about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's greatness. Talks about the people who believed in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. What will happen? The people who disbelieved in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. What will be their condition? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends off the surah once again with his greatness and he says, Qul min ghara, That say, who is the one if if your water turned dry? Ghawra. Then who can bring you water which is flowing in it? The next surah after this is Surah Al Qalam. In this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is consoling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> He is defending the Prophet وسلم, saying that, O oh, Prophet of Allah, you are not a majnoon, rather, you have the highest moral character. And that was the beautiful aspect and the amazing feature of the Prophet وسلم, that uh, some people asked, some companions, they asked Aisha, anha, the wife of the Prophet, وسلم, that, O oh, Aisha, what was the uh, distinguishing feature and characteristic of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Aisha radhiyallahu anha. She said, "Don't you read the Quran? Inna kalala khuluk nadim." That the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he had the sublime and the most amazing and the best character. And then in this surah, there's also a very famous incident. It is about the incident of the farmer, the one who used to feed the poor people. Where Allah subhanahu wa taala he talks about this incident and he says. Uh, that the people of the gardens referring to the incident of a person 
who used to have a field, you know, a, a field of crops and vegetation and fruits. And it would be his habit that whenever it's a time to harvest and whenever the fruits and the different vegetables are ready, this person, he would call all the poor people first, all the people who are needy, all the people who are, you know, less fortunate. And he would give them the different fruits and the different vegetation, the different crops. But when this person, he passed away, this uh, good habit of his also stopped, meaning his, his children did not take this habit seriously. And they always had a, uh, you know, this thing against their father. And why is our father feeding the poor people? You know, we can just make more money. Let's just keep it for ourselves. So it, it so happened that after the father passed away, a time came where the sons now, they are responsible for the harvesting. They were responsible to, you know, harvest the crops and to collect the crops and the different foods and the different vegetables. So they went at night, early at night, saying that, you know what? Uh, maybe the poor people will come and take our food because our father had this good habit of, you know, when uh, there was a new harvest, all the poor people would come. So they say, let's go early, early at nighttime so no one sees us and we'll go to our field. We'll go to our place where the crops are, where the vegetables are, where the vegetation is, where the greenery is. We'll go there and we'll quickly harvest and we'll bring everything back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when they went there, that when they went to that field, Allah SWT says that he sent his, he sent a, a punishment of his, maybe a hurricane, maybe some type of storm, any a punishment of Allah SWT came and it destroyed that field. And when they went there, Allah SWT says they passed by their field and they couldn't even realize that, you know what, <coughs> this was their field, that it was totally devastated and totally destroyed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that then the sons later realize that, you know what, we made a mistake and that we shall never do this again and we shall rather share our crops. And this is also, uh, you know, highly encouraged and emphasized that always feeding the poor people, always putting the people who are needy before us. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that one a companion, he complained to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, oh Prophet of Allah, I have one brother, he doesn't do anything. I'm the one who works. I'm the one who goes out and works on the date palm. I'm the one who gets the water. I'm the one who does everything for the household. This person is just, you know, very lazy. He's just sitting at home. He's not doing anything. The Prophet sallallahu changed his perspective and he said, Innama turzakuna, that you are giving, you are giving sustenance bidu'afa'ikum because of the people who are weak, because of the people who don't have the ability to work because of the people who are, uh, you know, for whatever reason, a valid shar'i reason, they're not able to go to work. Because of them, you are being given sustenance. After Surah Al-Qalam, uh, the next surah is Surah Al-Haqqa. Haqqa itself means the reality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about the Day of Judgment and Surah Al-Haqqa, Surah Ma'arij, and a couple of other surahs in, in the 29th Juz. There are many surahs which talk about the Day of Judgment and going into the 30th Juz as well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the different aspects and the different events that will happen on the Day of Judgment. In this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about the Day of Judgment, talking about His, his might and His grandeur on the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ As for the person who has been given his book of deeds in his right hand. As we know, the book of deeds is a reality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created two angels by the name of Kiram and Katibin. They're the noble scribes and they're the ones who are recording and writing down each and every single good deed, each and every single bad, bad deed. They're like, you know, a live video feed that they see each and every single thing that we do and they write that down so that on the day of judgment, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell them to present the book of deeds before us, then this book of deeds will be shown to us and each and every single good deed that we did in this world, we will see it. And each and every single evil deed, each and every single bad deed that we saw, that we will see as well. And on the day of judgment, our book of deeds will be a witness against us, either uh, when we did our evil deeds, you know, all the evil deeds will be there. And if we did good deeds, then all the good deeds will also be there. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describing 
the condition of the people on the day of judgment and describing the condition of those who were given their book of deeds in the right hand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fa amma man uti kitabahu bi yamini fa yaqulu ha umqra'u kitabiyah describing the happiness and the joy that a person will experience when his book of deeds will be given to him he will say ha umqra'u kitabiyah come here <coughs> come close and you know read my book just like today when a person he gets a very good grade on his exams or whether it's in the sat whether it's you know some type of uh, admittance into a certain type of institution or institute he gets very happy when he gets scores back and not only when he gets his scores back when he gets high scores it's it's a it's a sense of achievement it's something to be you know proud over because you work so hard for it in the same manner on the day of judgment those people who will receive their book of deeds in their right hand they'll be extremely happy and they'll be telling others and they'll be screaming ha umqra o kitab idha come come look at my book of deeds look, look, see how good i did look at my scores look at my results inni zanantu anni mulaqin hisabiya and they will say that definitely we believed that we were you know going to meet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes their condition that once they receive the book of deeds in their right hand and after that there only will be goodness just like in this world once a person gets a really good scores then there's very good news he can get into the school that he wants to he can actually, you know get into the different programs that he wants to and the real and the main program the all that we all of us need admittance in is paradise and when a person has book, his book of deeds in his right hand it's a very good sign that he will enter paradise that that's what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fahuwa fi aishatir radiya and now he will be in blessings and he'll be living such a life of peace and pleasantness Allah says fi jannatin aliya in high gardens in amazing gardens qutufuha daniya those branches of those gardens they will be lowered qulu washrabu hani'an bima aslaftum fil ayyam al khaliya and the announcement will be made that now eat and drink hani'a willingly pleasantly and you know freely you're completely free you can do whatsoever you want bima aslaftum because of what you have done in the past fil ayyam al khaliya in the past days and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the condition of those who got the book of deeds in their left hand and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect each and every single one of us may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us among such people may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who receive the book of deeds in the right hand they will say wa amma man uta kitabahu bi shimali as for the person who receives his book of deeds in his left hand which is a bad sign fa yaqulu ya laytani lam uta kitabiya he will be so depressed he'll be in such a sad state in a state of sorrow in a state of grief in a straight state of worry he will say ya laytani woe to me curse be upon him what have i done to myself today a person if he invests his money into some type of investment he loses his money he gets so sad if a person he you know uh, invests some money in a business or he buys a house some type of property that he goes to the house and he see that it's completely in the shambles and destroyed he feels like he wasted his money and he feels so unsuccessful he feels like he made a worse choice and he gets so angry he gets so sad the real sadness and the real anger and the real depression the real worry grief will be on the day of judgment when a person will, will receive his book of deeds in his left hand and he will say lam uta kitabi i wish i was never given my book of deeds in the left hand you know curse be upon me may i be destroyed you know what what did i do that I destroyed myself i invested every single thing in this world every single thing following my desires every single thing against the commandments of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and now today allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say that you know here is your book of deeds you did not live up to my commandments you did not fulfill your responsibilities and this person will be in a state of depression and sadness and then he will say walam adri ma hisabi ya laita hadha al qadiya ma aghna an mali he will scream and he will let out his cry what is a person who physically screams and what is a person who is screaming from the heart the scream of the heart is far more intense far more severe and far more painful and this person who will say ma aghna anni mali all that wealth that i have all that wealth that i amass all those properties that i have all those businesses that i have and so much effort i put into this world where did all that money go did that wealth those properties those businesses everything i worked for where is it today it did not even help me one bit 
it did not even help me one bit or at all. Halaka an mi sultaniya. In my kingdom that I built in this dunya, all of that may be destroyed. Fuduhu fagunlu. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order the angels of hellfire that you grab this person and you chain him up. You, 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 you cover him in chains. Thumma al jahim wa sallu. And drag him and throw him into the hellfire. Thumma fi silsilatin dharuha sab'una dhira'an fasluku. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describing the painful torture and the punishment this person will go through. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect each and every single one of us. After this is Surah Al-Ma'arij. Once again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about the day of judgment. And one unique aspect of this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا يَسْأَلُوا حَمِيمٌ حَمِيمًا That when the mountains will crumble and the mountains will crush and they'll turn into cotton and they'll be like dust and they'll be floating. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on that day when the day of judgment happens, وَلَا يَسْأَلُوا حَمِيمٌ حَمِيمًا Hamim is a guardian. Hamim is a friend, a close friend, a protector, someone who you listen to, someone who you worry about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in this dunya, you used to worry about your other Hamim. But on the day of judgment, even a Hamim will not worry about other Hamim. Meaning one close friend will not worry whatsoever at all about the next next person who was his close friend. يُبَصَّرُونَهُمْ يَوَدُّ الْمُجْرِمُ لَوْ يَفْتَدِي مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمَ إِذِ لِبَنِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, says, on the day of judgment, the mujrim, the criminal, the one who broke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandments, the one who disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who lived a life of sin, the one who lived a life of disobedience, the one who lived a life of following his desires and negating and rejecting and disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the mujrim and the greatest mujrim and the greatest jurm and the sin and the crime that could ever be done upon the face of this earth is to reject the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says on that day, the mujrim, the criminal, he will say, لَوْ يَفْتَدِي مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمَ إِذِينَ If he can give everything in ransom, he can give his family in ransom, he can give his children in ransom, he can give all of his wealth, all of his properties, everything, just so he can be saved from the punishment of the Day of Judgment, just so he can be saved from the punishment of the hellfire. وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَأَخِي وَفَصِيلَتِهِ الَّتِي تُؤْوِي وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَنْيَانَ فَتُقْمَ يُرْجِي you can do every single thing that you want, but now is not the time. I gave you time in the dunya. I gave you resources in the dunya. I gave you ability in the dunya. I gave you wealth in the dunya. I gave you family in the dunya. I gave you health in the dunya. And you could utilize all of that to come near me, but rather you disobeyed me. And now you want to give everything up in return just so you can be safe from the hellfire. Allah SWT say, Allah, never don't even think about it. Forget about it. What you're thinking about, what you're asking about, what you're dreaming, what you're desiring, all of that will never be answered. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are given the book of Jesus in the right hand. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never make us among those who are given the book of Jesus in the left hand. That's why there's a beautiful dua from Aisha radiallahu anha that the Prophet taught her, Allahumma hasibni hisab al Oh Allah, make my account easy on the day of judgment. And then after this, Surah al Nuh, Surah al Jinn, and Surah, Surah Al-Mudathir, Muzammil, and Surah Al-Dahab. And as we know, <coughs> the last juz, which is the 30th juz, is full of many surahs. And obviously, lack of time, we don't have enough time. Just a reminder to me and each and every single one of us that this purpose of this little tafsir or this little understanding of the Quran, I would like to call it, that we embarked upon in this month of Ramadan, was just to see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in the various parts of the Quran. And we can see the message is very similar throughout the entire Quran. We have to be asking Allah SWT for guidance. We have to be doing good deeds. We have to stay away from evil. We have to make dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and different messages and different points. But the crux of all of it is that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has chosen us for the, chosen for us the way of Islam. If we choose to practice the way of Islam, then Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will give us a a life full of blessings, a life full of his obedience, and a life full of his his, uh, his 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 oneness where we can acknowledge his oneness, we can worship him and be close to him. And whatever trials that come in this world and whatever difficulties that come in this world, that is a part, part of this life. But in return of all these difficulties, Allah will reward us in the hereafter. And those who disobey, those who reject it, <clears throat> this life will be trouble for them and in the Akhir will be trouble for them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accepts his tafsir, that he accepts his little 
is the seat of ours and that any shortcomings, any mistakes in explaining, and any mistakes in understanding, any you know, wrong explanation that was given, we hope not, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make him, you know, forgive us, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us, and let us conclude with the dua. <coughs> وعند الوجوه من الحي القيوم والملك القدوس العزيز الحي العزيز الكريم الحي القيوم اللهم صل على محمد النبي الذي وعد تسليما ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكون من الخاسرين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت المهاب اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعفو عنا يا كريم والله أكسبت تسليم القرآن uh, initiative of ours in trying to understand your book and going to the various surahs and trying to look, look, understand the various ayahs that you have sent down. Oh Allah, you accept this from us. Oh Allah, you make us people who are connected to the Quran. Oh Allah, you make us people who practice upon the Quran, who spread the message of the Quran. Oh Allah, save guard and protect us from all these ayahs where the people will be punished and the do not make us amongst those people. Oh Allah, make us amongst those people who earn your pleasure and who earn your jannah and who earn your forgiveness and who earn your mercy. Oh Allah, that you can be part of Allah and accept our deeds. And you make us amongst the people who are forgiven and granted paradise. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad nabi wa nabi wa ala arisim tasima. Rabbana tukabbal minna inna katu sami alim. Wa tuba alina inna katu tawab. Sallallahu ta'ala ala qayyum nabi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ala alihi 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 wa